Hey everyone, it's Byron again. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. I recorded a video that I intended on publishing two days ago, but the content of that video became huge. And by the time I went through the editing process, etc., I realized it's just too much to take in at one time. So I'm breaking that into small pieces. And here is one of the pieces. We're, we're talking about what is impeding us from... Um, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives as he should. And <clears throat> by doing so, I'm examining certain scripture that you can find relatively easily within the Bible and, and trying to show people that there's certain ways that we can do or certain things that we can do that actually limit or impede the Holy Spirit. So I want to start Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. I want to read that verse and I want to talk about you know basically what that verse is saying and then try to resolve one question people have and that is whether or not we should keep the law today. Let's, let's read this first. It says stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage and that is in Galatians 5 and it's chapter 1. And when it's speaking of the yoke of bondage, Paul is talking about the law. If you read all of Galatians, you'll, you'll realize uh, he's, he's basically saying these Pharisees, the sect of Pharisees came up, said you must be circumcised. And basically he says, if you're going to be circumcised, you got to keep the whole law. And if you're going to keep the whole law, Christ is of no effect to you. In essence, and, and this is scriptural, the law taught us or schooled us he was our schoolmaster to bring us to christ because we realized we just can't keep the law okay now there are certain aspects that the apostles did meet together and discuss and they decided okay these particular things um, we do need to to warn the gentile christians about and here's what they did in acts chapter 15 verse 5 uh, it says <clears throat> There arose certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And then, then if you go to verse 20, they decided that they would write a letter to the Gentiles and that they, the letter should contain this information. It said that you should abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So you can read that there yourself, but in essence, if you want to talk about, well, what does, what did the apostles tell the early church about the law? And Paul basically told them, don't be entangled with the yoke of bondage, the law. And there's a lot to this, and that's why the video was so big the other day, and I'm trying to break it down into pieces. I can't answer everything at one time, but I want to make certain points along the way and build this thing. So <clears throat> they did that. So if, if we do need to pay attention to certain things, we would need to focus, okay, these are the certain things that the apostles told us about the law that we really need to pay attention to. And pollutions of idols, that's one. Uh, fornication, that's another. Stay away from things strangled and from blood. I'm not going to cover the things strangled and from blood. I think it's pretty easy. Don't drink blood and don't strangle something and then eat it. I mean, that's relatively easy. However, in the other, <clears throat> the other part about the pollutions of idols and fornication, those two can actually be discussed at the same time. And that's what I want to do right now is, is talk about those two because they, they, idols come under fornication. If, if, let me show you. If you look at the word fornication in the Strong's, it's, it's actually G4203. Um, and it, it, it describes it as the act of a harlot. And that is literally to indulge in unlustful, I mean, unlawful lust of either sex, or in a figurative sense, practice idolatry. So you see how it's easy to, to include pollutions of idols with fornication, because 
figuratively speaking, idolatry, I mean, fornication is speaking of idolatry. So within the context of this, you have a literal side, meaning a physical side, don't engage in um, unlawful lust in the physical sense. And that could be today, today the, the way the world is today, and it was this way in Jesus' time, except with the exception of the hyper, um, the, the extra internet involvement, the extra publicity, the things that we have flashing things in our screen, on our screen in front of us. But Jesus stated that if you even look on a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery. And that same way would be uh, for fornication. But I think perhaps a more even overlooked and undertaught aspect of fornication is the figurative sense, and that's the practice of idolatry. I would I would recommend not necessarily right now, but I'd recommend after afterwards you look at a video that I did. It's called um, America's Christian Idols, and then I put in parentheses of the heart. We can have idols that you can just literally look. Okay, let's just call it the Statue of Liberty. That's a graven image. That's an idol. There are people that worship the Statue of Liberty in their secret sense. It's not necessarily open at the time, but you can you can make a case for the Statue of Liberty being the light bearer, Lucifer, and people worshiping that. What's more difficult is to understand or to grasp what would be an idol of the heart. And just a couple of quick examples would be something that you do um, that is that is robbing your time with your spouse. Now, if you look at it from the sense of fornication, you are married to Christ. And if you're married to Christ, um, you're supposed to love the Lord your God with all the heart, soul, and strength. Uh, but how is the, the time of your day, how is that spent? Is that spent engaging in something that is not Christ-like? And let me just... I'm going to use television for an example. You can make a case for many different television programs that they are, for the most part, neutral or not bad. But you don't necessarily know, know the whole behind the scenes because that could be something sacrificed to an idol. Oh, you know, like if you're going to dedicate a show, well, we're going to dedicate this to Lucifer. It's going to show the good guy. And then it's going to show the bad guys, but hopefully the the iniquity portion of it will be believed, and then that person may act on the iniquity side. <clears throat> I don't know if I made sense. Let me say that one more time just so it comes across at a different angle. If you are being presented a show in which you have a hero, let's just say Gunsmoke MacDillan, because the Lord used this as an example in my life. He showed me that watching Gunsmoke was fornication. And I didn't quite understand it, but I, I, I went along, and as time goes along, I understand it more and more. Let's just say you want to let Matt De Dillon be your hero. Oh, yeah, Matt Dillon's always doing what's good, etc., etc. In the process of you admiring or perhaps even Id uh, idolizing Matt Dillon, there's all these bad guys that come along, and, and you're, you're exposed to iniquity during the same process that you're watching your hero rise up against it. So you have this light and darkness, good and evil, etc. And it it's, could be considered programming, like a television program or also a mind program in which you're being exposed to things that you don't necessarily need to be exposed to. You can go to the Gospels, I think, Matthew and Luke. The eye is supposed to be single, but if an eye lets light in you're full of light if your eye lets darkness in you're full of darkness but I don't want to get too big that's, that's what happened to the first video I got too big I tried to explain everything and it's not, not all that straight <laughs> but back to the basic general sense of the purpose of the video <clears throat> we're not supposed to be um, 
controlled by the yoke of bondage or the law. We don't need to be married to the law. We need to be married to Christ. And there's only a minimum amount of things that the apostles told us that need to be considered. And I think the, the, the largest portion or the biggest emphasis of that needs to be placed on fornication. And fornication being, it could be a literal sense, in, in, you know, having unlawful sex outside of marriage. And that could also be, you know, just imaginary sex. There's even a song called Imaginary Lover by a group back in my day. Um, <clears throat> but then you can have the physical act. But I think more so, you can have idols of the heart, things that things that impede you from ser serving the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, and strength. And they can they can sound good. They can, let's say for example, well I need to make money. I need to. Uh, get a place for my family to live. I need to prepare for my children's education. You know, you, and as you add all these things up, it all sounds good with one exception. Scripture doesn't tell us to do that. Scripture states, you know, um, and all other things will be added to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. That's how the scripture reads. But we can sometimes put these other things, maybe the idols of our heart, the things that we consider to be near and precious to us, we can put them in front of our relationship with God. And and what I'm trying to say within the video is if we are in a state of fortification or adultery with the Lord, and, and it is in just the figurative sense, not... I'm not talking about the physical sense where you're literally having fornication and you know physical interaction with people. I'm talking about the figurative sense of the practice of idolatry and messing around with things outside of what's God. This is my belief. I believe that at that point you have <clears throat> put a strain on the relationship with Christ. And the Spirit of Christ is the Holy Ghost. I believe that the Holy Ghost can can stop working in your life during the periods of time you're in the act of fornication against God. That's that's what I, I believe. And I, I want to show in Romans chapter 7, I just want to show how Paul wrote about this relationship with the law and uh, with a, a spouse. He just kind of married those things together. And let me just read these scripture here and kind of talk through them real quick <clears throat> Paul said in verse 7 I mean chapter 7 verse 1 he said know you not brethren for I speak to them which know the law how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth but if the husband be dead she is loose from the law of her husband. And that's talking about in the physical. I'm married. I am bound to my spouse as long as my spouse lives. Okay. That's the physical sense. That's the, the scenario that we're dealing with. But then he goes on. He, so, he says, so then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another, she shall be called an adulteress. So that would be like having... Uh, you would you would be married, you get a divorce, and then you're remarried. Now, I do think there's one exception to that, but that, that's not for this video. But once the remarriage occurs, that puts the person into adultery, and adultery falls under fornication. Um, <clears throat> but then he says, but if her husband be dead, she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress, Though she be married to another. So the, the escape from the law would be to die or a husband to die. And then Paul goes on. He says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. And, and he, he goes on. But 
if you if you re read that verse right there once more time, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. And right there, fruit unto God is an indication of the Holy Ghost working in you. That's what I believe. You could say the fruit of the Spirit, the evidence of the Holy Spirit working. Um, so if we're dead to the law, if we take all the law, set it aside with the exception of what we talked about, um, don't try to keep that, then we free ourselves up to serve in newness of um, spirit. And that's probably pretty close here, right? Verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we are held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So newness of spirit and not in the oldness of letter, meaning don't go back and try to just follow the law step by step, cha-ching, 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 but serve in newness of spirit. And the spirit will guide us. However, we still have this fornication issue. And in today's world, it's there's so many things coming at us that would become something that distracts us or takes us away from spending our time with Christ. Now, I'm not trying to say that don't go to work, just spend all your time with Christ and, and don't do that. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. I want to keep it within uh, reason. But you can, you can spend a day in which you're meditating on the scripture. Uh, you're doing the work of the Lord. Even at work, you're, you can do the work of the Lord if the opportunities present itself. So at least set a good example. Um, but then what is your mind being carried off? Where, where's your where's your mind going? I, I, there's Old Testament talks about idols of the heart in that other video that I'm, I've got listed here. Um, and I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, it talks about idols of the heart. So where's our time spent? And if our time is spent outside of the Lord, then that can be a state of fornication. And I'm not saying that you have to stop doing everything in your life. Let's just say, you know, some, a simple task is that, well, I have to go and get food. You know what I'm saying? Well, as we move down the road and get food, we're not committing fornication against the Lord. But if our mind is con completely, uh, completely consumed with other things that are not God, such as, well, I got to, you know, do this, 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 and this in order that I could get to a point to where I've got my life set up correctly. And then once I get my life set up correctly, then I'm going to serve the Lord. That That's not how it's made, meant to be. So um, I'm labeling this something on the lines of my fornication and adultery issues. And what I, what I want to say is that we need to be free from the law, but we do have to watch for fornication and those other things I mentioned. But within fornication, we can have spiritual or metaphorical um, fornication. And if we do so, that right there can impede the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. And, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, the, the quick testimony of that. In 2008, I decided to just throw everything aside and just do everything I could to learn about the gospel of Jesus Christ and to serve the Lord with all my heart, soul, and strength. And at that point, I pretty much cut off all outside influence except Bible. I'm serious, man. I, 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 mean, I, was, I wouldn't sit in front of the television. I wouldn't go on the internet and do this or that, except there were some hangups there. I, I mean, I, the pornography, I, I had that hang up and, I, and the Lord delivered me from that. But I set out that I was going to serve the Lord with all my heart, soul, and strength and eliminate the pollutants or the pollutions of idols. And and what I mean by idols, all these other things out here that are, the wonderful world of America has set up uh, for us to occupy our time with, except the Lord. And to, for the first time in my life, I experienced a personal revival that has lasted. Before I had spent time in revival myself, personal revivals, and then for some reason they just didn't last. And unfortunately, I have to report, in the previous times, I also experienced a revival and went to churches. And I'm going to tell you, the churches can, the churches can teach you wrong. 
they can they can add to the law but i'm trying to keep this narrow but it is possible you can go to church and be sitting a bunch of among a bunch of fornicators you know spiritually spiritual fornication um and and all they want to do is talk about worldly things as soon as the service is over that's what they want they want to jump on oh gosh man you should have seen it and and you see my point i believe that you need to work toward elimination of all these other distractions and you know you could go to scripture and there's scripture out there being not part of the world and etc that that say these things pretty much straight up but i think that that impedes our the working of the holy spirit in our life in that we can't expect our relationship with the lord as if it were marriage and it is to be straight if we're cheating on the lord that's kind of the, the example i want to use so i'm gonna let you go um there's an item i mean a, a, a video in the description box that i did about america's christian idols um, earlier back in 2020 so that's there and that's a small portion of what i wanted to cover in this so thank you